Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's reading I thought I'd do a twin flame reading. Before I begin I did want to show you guys these roses that I got. So we'll move these out of the way. So these roses are for, from a company called Forever Ro Rose Forever New York and they are real roses so I'll just take they have a beautiful cover and a case. So again, these are real roses and they sent me them and now they're a part of my setup. And they're absolutely beautiful and they last a really long time. Years if you take care of them. I got ivory to go with my setup and this crystal case actually has, it has a drawer in it so you can keep whatever you wanted to keep in your little hidey hole. <laughs> For me, it's crystals. <laughs> anyway, these are beautiful and I'm so happy with them. Um, if you do want to save money, you can use my code. All of the information about these are in the description box below, including a code to save $25. So that's pretty good, right? <laughs> so I'll just read to you what it says here. Your rose forever flowers are real. If you take care of them a little, they will stay beautiful like on the first day for many years. Please don't water the roses or treat them with other care products. Avoid touching the petals as that could affect their lifespan. Ideally, keep them away from direct sunlight. And you can just dust, gently dust them off if they get dusty, but again, they also come with this beautiful cover. So I actually cover mine up when I'm not doing readings. So yeah, that's, they're absolutely beautiful. Rose Forever, New York. And again, I will leave all of that information in the description box below, including the code to get you 25% off, or $25 off, I should say. All right, so let's get back to the Twin Flames. <laughs> All right, so again, I really felt called to do a reading because in some of the readings I've been doing, I've been picking up on energy of people that are in low contact, minimal contact, feeling confused. And I've been talking a lot about how when we come into contact again after a difficult separation, that it's, um, it's hard because we've built walls and we've built boundaries and it's different than it was the first time. And what's really funny is that the reader that I always talk about that I love so much, <laughs> she posted something very similar last night. And I was like, oh, I am, I am tapping into that collective <laughs> because I'd already been saying those things. So that, you know, for me, confirmation. Anyway, I didn't even really talk about anything else. If you want to book a private reading, you can message me. I am booking into next week now. I'm just shocked at the response from you guys. I can't, every day I'm just in shock. <laughs> anyway, I'm also going through something. I feel like I'm elevating spiritually or something. There's something happening to me. I'm getting, I'm three, four, five on the timer. Thank you, spirit confirmation. I am getting crazy synchronicities, signs, thoughts pop into my head. I just, I can't describe what I'm going through. And my, my forehead, I always used to think I was having headaches, but it's actually just this pressure of my third eye, which is apparently your clairvoyant skills. Oh, anyway, it's been... <laughs> It's been a month, <laughs> but again, this is my favorite place to be now. So I'm just going to hang out here. I saw my birthday time on the timer. Oh, anyway, and I also brought out my little elephant. <laughs> All right. So spirit, I want to see what's going on with the collective. We're going to get some of these and then we're going to get tarot and then we're going to get those sh scary shadow cards from yesterday. <laughs> I find them scary. It's normal for our ego to react when we talk about shadow work. 
and facing <laughs> facing our own toxic behaviors. It's your ego doesn't want that. <laughs> So again, like my best friend, I was like, oh, look at this deck I got. And I was like, oh, shadow work. She's like, that's terrifying. <laughs> All right, Spirit, so what message do you have for this Twin Flame Collective that I'm tapping into? Please only take what resonates. This is a general reading. I, I did want to get to a pick a card. I still might this week for Twin Flames. The week isn't over yet. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, this is such a big deck. It's, it can be hard to shuffle. One more. Oh, much better. Much better. There we go. All right, so again, this is a collective reading, so just take what resonates. So Spirit, I really want to know about this collective that I'm <laughs> tapping into. I really want to know. Let's see what's going on. You've been warned. This, these readings can be long and I can talk. I just need a second. I really didn't want to, I don't want to take all these cards. But did you see the 11s? 11, 11, 11. I don't want to take all those cards. I want to take this one. Oh, let's see. What is this shift? What is this shift? This card says there's a shift coming. All right. So for some of you, we have this card. It's 11... The next solstice or equinox will bring us bring an important shift for us. Draw another card to get an idea what this shift may be. Now again, for I keep saying again, I really gotta stop that. Anyway. Whoops. Um 911 could be important, or 119 or 1199, or take it as it resonates. We have because of you, I'm starting to see what is really important in life. And Nines are about evolution of self, and this next solstice or equinox will bring an important shift for us. I want to wait to see what the cards say, but for a lot of you, I'm feeling that's union. And that's getting to a point where you can actually be together and communicate about this journey together and be vulnerable with this person. For a lot of you, I do feel like you're talking to them or about to talk to them, but we'll see what comes out in the cards. Um, because lately I have been tapping into a collective that is in low communication or just starting out. And it's difficult. It is difficult. The reader that I was listening to, she said, you think separation is hard? She said, wait until you come back in to contact and you have to again work through the boundaries and the walls that have been put up anyway so I do feel like this is union energy and that's a really important shift and for a lot of you you could again hear from this person before that what else spirit I feel like this person has really They've really realized that because through separation, that's, I just saw 9-11 on the timer, you guys, that's significant for someone. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, this journey through separation, it's meant to, it's meant to show us how important this is. And how at the end of the day, we really do want this. We want to choose this. We have unconditional love for that person. And it, the person mirrors you. So keep in mind, however you're feeling, they're feeling. If you're feeling, if you're feeling like there's walls up, that person feels it too. They're aware of it. 
We have one. I'm listening to my higher self now. A higher power is guiding me. Karmic ties. My heart is with another right now. I have to finish this karmic contract in order to be free. So that's just for some of you. A lot of... For a lot of you, I feel that this karmic was a past energy. But for some of you, your person could be in a karmic situation right now and you be aware of that. Again, you really have to look for the good in the lesson that the karmic teaches. They do teach the counterpart a lesson and it's usually a lesson that helps them. It just guides them right back to their counterpart. And one thing I will say is that you should avoid, if you can, avoid talking to the karmic. Avoid communicating with the karmic if the karmic reaches out to you. My suggestion is to not talk to them. And I speak from experience. I speak from very difficult experience. The karmic reached out to me. And it was a test. I really do feel like it was a test. And I was supposed to not talk to that person. But what did I do? My curious little mind was just like, ooh, I want to know what's going on. Tell me everything. And it really, looking back, I mean, I don't regret anything. But looking back, I wish that I hadn't done that. And what happened was the universe delivered another test to me. And the second time I passed, the second time I withdrew my energy and said, no, I'm not getting involved with that energy. But anyway, your person is listening to their higher self right now. And I do get people worrying that, do they love the karmic more than me? Are they more attracted to the karmic than me? What if they don't leave the karmic? That karmic, that relationship is meant to break them some way. It's destiny. It's karmic. They need to experience that karma. Sometimes for how they treated you. Other times the karmic person is teaching them a lesson that you couldn't teach them because you're wonderful and forgiving. But again, the whole time they're with that person, they never, they never lose the attachment to your energy. They never lose the attachment to your light. This card looks so much like the Nine of Cups in the Light Sears deck. It just, like, look at that light just guiding your person. 11-11, oh my gosh. All right, let's keep going. What else, Spirit? And then, again, we're going to look at Tarot. We have Union. The same divine energy flows in each of us. This energy is the catalyst to our reunion. We just need this energy to work its magic. Yes! Again, you and this person are... You mirror each other. So for those of you who are in low contact and you're scared... That divine counterpart said something this morning, and she said she's all about setting boundaries, and when they come back in, if they're not behaving right, hold your energy back. But when it's this union energy, I'm so glad I watched that reading. When it's union energy, and the masculine is coming in, and it's that low contact, really, you know, guarded and you're feeling confused and you want to know what's going on and you want to be closer, they're feeling the exact same way because you're mirrors. And this counterpart reader said, it's this part of your journey, this, this, when you come back together after a really painful separation and you're testing the waters, this is when you want to embody Queen of Cups energy, and I'm not talking about overgive, overgive, overgive. She was talking about opening your heart and being vulnerable with that person because, in turn, your mirrors 
And that person, again, that person loves you and they want to tell you that. But are you telling them that? Are you opening your heart, being vulnerable to them? So anyway, I'm so glad I watched that reading. Again, there's, there's moments on this journey where we do have to embody for the feminine, take it as it resonates. Masculine too, you have to embody all of those energies. You have to embody the Queen of Swords energy when that person is mistreating you, disrespecting your boundaries. That's Queen of Swords, stand in your authentic truth. But then there's, and there's also a time not to chase. That's Empress energy. But there's also a time to embody that Queen of Cups and open your heart back up. Anyway, I'm so glad I watched that reading. What else, Spirit? I've never, I've never felt love like this before. The depth of it can be inspiring, but also overwhelming. Again, whatever you're feeling, this person is feeling it too. And you're mirrors. So again, if you're transforming, if you're working on yourself, if you're looking at your shadows, this person is doing the same because you're mirrors. We could have, you know, same-sex couple in here. Hello. All right, what else, spirit? <laughs> right away. Okay, so this came out in the last reading, and I do want to talk about this because this is actually something that I, it was one of my last lessons to learn, and it was this, I feel like this is for the listener, but take it as it resonates. I feel abandoned. I often feel like others let me down. This could be your person too, but this is about if you feel like everybody abandons you, you know what's really awful? My person said this to me once, and I thought, how could you be so toxic to say that? But it's that mirror. It's that. It's them reflecting back onto you, your shadows. And they said, why do you think everybody always leaves you? And I took offense to it. And you, you want to know the honest truth? Why I felt like everybody left me? is because I left them. I felt abandoned by everyone, but I pushed them all away. I pushed friends away. I pushed people away. Some of them needed to be pushed away, and I don't. I'm happier. But again, I was living this pattern where I felt I had an abandonment wound, and I constantly felt abandoned, and I pushed people away. And I'm going to be really vulnerable with you guys about a part of my journey right now. Um, so I have this abandonment wound because when I was younger, if I made a mistake, I would, I would get kicked out of my house. And I'd be trying to find somewhere to stay for the night. I was a teenager. It was... I have nights where I sat outside... Oh, all night, sleeping, sitting up in a doorway. I mean, so I had huge abandonment wounds. And when I was in it, I couldn't see it. But I had actually traveled to see my counterpart. And I was triggered. And I did what I always do. And I tried to push them away. And I said, you know what? I might as well just leave. And because they're a mirror, and because it's meant to teach you something, they said, all right, get out then. <laughs> and for those of you who watch me, I'm autistic. And I can't tell you what it was like. I pushed this person away. And then I was shocked when they let me anyway. It was a huge part of my journey because I was in a city alone. I had no friends there, no, nobody to help me. Well, I had somebody at home that was trying to help me, but it was a huge part of my journey. And I realized that yes, I was pushing people away. So again, there's this 
with this card, I did mention it in my last reading, there really is this feeling of if you feel like everybody always lets you down, if you feel like everybody always does this, if you feel like everybody always does that, it's possible that there's a lesson that you're not learning because the universe keeps delivering that lesson until you learn from it. And it took me having a tower moment in a city where I didn't know where I was or what direction was what to make me realize that lesson that I had been pushing people away my entire life. Almost like a test. Like, I'm going to push you away, see if you care enough to push back or... Anyway, again, this journey is very humbling. Whew. On the bottom of the deck, we have I miss you. Let's both stop running away. So again, this is... Whoops, that flew out of my hand. So again, guys, I'm really picking up on a lot of you. This is a six, so union, energy, six of cups, lovers. I miss you. Let's both stop running away. And I feel like for a lot of you, you're you're already talking to this person or you're in low communication or spiritually you know that you're going to be hearing from them soon and you're feeling this wall in between you and again you guys are mirrors both of you feel the wall both of you don't want the wall to be there but it's almost like neither of you know how to get it to come down and this counterpart reader was saying Again, the feminine needs to lead. So the feminine needs to lead in opening up vulnerability so that the divine masculine knows that it's safe to also be vulnerable. Because remember what you're feeling, they're feeling. I am so glad I saw that reading. I can't even tell you. And you guys say it in my comments, like this reading popped up at the perfect time. That reading popped up at the perfect time for me. Because it was what I was feeling in my readings. And it was just confirmation. Okay, let's get a few more cards. Timing and intentions. I'm praying you'll come back after everything that happened between us. I'm worried that you won't forgive me and allow me another chance. So guys, this is chariot energy. This is... For some of you, this person is about to come towards you. And they're, they're worried. They're worried you won't forgive them. But what they don't realize is that you already have an unconditional love for them. So for those of you, it's been a long separation, just Queen of Cups energy. Queen of Cups energy. No overgiving. But your person's scared. I mean, I would be too. Divine... Divine feminines or well take it as it resonates, you could be a masculine, but you know how you feel about this person. Again, it's a mirror. You know how you feel about this person, like nobody else compares to them, that the energetic bond doesn't compare with anybody else, that this person just speaks to you in a way or speaks to your soul in a way that you can't understand. They feel the same thing, you guys. They feel the same thing because you guys are mirrors. And your hearts just want to come back together. The hearts want to come together. They just want to be together. All right. <laughs> we project our patterns. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we project our patterns onto each other. And this makes it difficult to see what is real and what is fear-based thinking. This is exactly what I was saying about my experience where I was projecting. I was projecting a pattern. Anyway, a humbling journey, you guys. And again, it's very important. Very, 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 very important to look at your own shadows, to look at your own reactions, because you guys are mirrors. <laughs> Romantic messages. I feel the sexual energy between us, yet it's beyond physical attraction it needs to be elevated to the expression of deep unconditional love and that's what this journey is about it starts off this unexplainable connection and then you hit the you start reflecting you start teaching each other the lessons 
and it grows into this unconditional love and it teaches you unconditional love for other people. In case you're new here, <laughs> I'm very passionate about this. <laughs> I just want to get a few more. Let's go once through the deck and see. Last messages. Last messages for the viewer. Again, this is a collective reading, so just take what resonates. Wow, a lot are coming out. All right. Okay, I'm going to take... I need to take these cards. I need to take these cards, you guys. Okay. That's a lot of cards, but we'll get through it. <laughs> I just really feel called to take them. All right, so I'll try not to dilly-dally. <laughs> Does anybody even say that anymore? For those of you who are autistic, um, vocal stimming, echolalia, I love that. Dilly-dally. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> uh, infinite, <laughs> our union energy needs clearing. Repeat this 11 times with slow, deep breaths. Are you listening, my people? Are you listening? 11 times, deep breaths. Say this out loud to your person in the 5D. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. I'm grateful for you. And it doesn't matter we both need to forgive each other. We've both, nobody's innocent, nobody's to blame. It's not manipulative. It's not, I don't, I know you don't agree with me, commenters. <laughs> uh, but again, you really need to meet each other halfway. And I'm not talking about in the beginning stages when a lesson needs to be learned. I'm talking to my people who have been through a painful separation and are just starting to bridge that gap. You need to meet each other halfway. You need to be vulnerable and admit your side. I'm seeing that clean up your side of the street, clean it up, the card in whatever deck the... Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll repeat this. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. I'm grateful for you. Just put it out there into the universe, guys. Use the energy. You believe in the energy? Let's use it. Seven, I need to move slowly with this, but trust that I am moving, moving even when it seems that I'm not. This is for the... Guys, this is for those of you that are already in contact. And those of you who feel this person energetically, you're feeling them because they're about to be in contact. <laughs> and they are going to move slow. They're going to take baby steps. And what do I say? We don't want... This looks like the Knight of Pentacles. We don't want that Knight of Wands. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want the in and out. The quick gratification. We want slow. <laughs> Slow and steady, okay? Slow and steady. Seven again. Seven, seven, seven. Separated or together, we are working in tandem with each other. That's what I was saying about if you are, whatever you're feeling, your person is feeling. So if you're in no contact, dreaming about your person, thinking about your person, hearing songs about your person, they are too. If you're in low contact, and you're like, I wish we could be messaging more. I wonder how they're feeling. I wonder if they still love me. I wonder if they're, insert fear here. <laughs> they are, they have the same worries because you're mirrors, okay? Eleven, I close my eyes. Okay, this is an important one too. I close my eyes and imagine you're here with me. It feels so real. I'm beginning to understand this is what it means to be in 5D with you. And I'm telling you guys, you may see, you may seem seem, you may feel <laughs> you may feel 
you may feel silly doing this, but guys, <laughs> I'm telling you, you're not just using your imagination when you do this. You're actually connecting with them. And you can actually, I'm not talking about visualizing going into their lives and <laughs> stirring stuff up. I'm talking about visualizing that you're there next to each other and that you can tell this person that you love them and give them a hug or a kiss or whatever else you want to do to them. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -mm. One, oh, 111 could be important. Our hearts are connected. Take a moment to close your eyes and feel the connection. <laughs> See? That's two messages about visualizing, and I feel like that's an important part when you're getting near union, in my opinion. <laughs> anyway, start visualizing. Start visualizing. Go on a date with your person in the 5D, seriously. Or if you're not into dating <laughs> your person, visualize just whatever you want <laughs> to do to them, and I don't mean it like that. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. Look at all these ones, you guys. I'm afraid this relationship is too good to be true and I pull away in fear. See, that's that Knight of Wands energy. We don't want that. We want, take it slow. Take it slow. Be vulnerable. Open the heart. Six, our love will manifest through the union of heart and mind. Exp Come on. <laughs> Expanding these areas allows our love to grow. See? See, there's a reason I took all those cards. I didn't even read them all. I just felt called to take them. This is lover's energy. Well, actually, with this one, I really do get the Six of Swords just because of the boats. Um, but again, there's a huge message here for you to start visualizing this. Start, start actually visualizing it in the 5D. I mean, it's already happening in the 5D, but start visualizing it because you're looking at the 5D when you're doing that. Come on, you guys. <laughs> what did I just say about visualizing, about doing whatever <laughs> it is that you want to be doing to them? I feel like they're doing this. I feel like they're already doing this. And this is why this energy is like, you should do it too, because it strengthens the bond. Please, just try it. You don't have to tell me about it. <laughs> I long for your kisses and your touch. You cannot... You cannot compare... A karmic connection to a soul connection. You cannot. It does not... There's no comparison to you, I'm telling you. No comparison. Communication. Look at all these cards... Please contact me. I may not respond, but knowing you care opens my heart. That is very interesting. Now, I want you to listen to your intuition because you do you. If you don't want to contact them, don't contact them. I am one of the people <laughs> that would every now and then <sighs> send a song or send like, I hope you're healing. <laughs> I hope you're working on yourself. <laughs> you know, anyway. But for some of you who are already contacting, contacting, in contact, <laughs> like I was saying at the beginning, there's this energy of being afraid to be vulnerable, being afraid to open up. And this is kind of confirmation of that. So if you're feeling like you want, if you're feeling drawn to open your heart a little bit to this person, I feel like this person is feeling the same. They want to open their heart to you, but they're, again, if they're a masculine, they're waiting for you. <laughs> and it's not a game. It's energetic. Mirrors. You are in your pattern, your old patterns, but can't see it. So again, there's something about here, that abandonment card in this one, to look at your own patterns. And you can still... You can still look at these and work on them as you come into contact, as you come into union. You can still continue to work on these. And I mean, you never stop working on them. Seven, I'll contact you when I'm able to. Right now, my life is too complicated to bring you into it. 
but know that I do want to talk to you. And I know that our ego tells us if they did want to talk to us, they would, they would make time, but they, they really, it's because this is very fragile. This is a very delicate, beautiful, intense, unexplainable bond that the two of you have. And they don't want to come in Knight of Wands, little bit of communication and then pull back a little bit of like they you deserve more than that. And until they can give you that, <clears throat> it's going to be slow. And again, that's what we want. We want baby steps. Have you guys ever seen, I'm really curious because now I feel called to mention this. Have you guys ever seen What About Bob? I'm really interested because I watched that movie since I was a kid. And again, most of you won't know what I'm talking about, but the scene I kept thinking about when I was like waiting for divine timing and I was waiting for all of these things to unfold and I was feeling frustrated. I kept thinking about Bob from what about Bob and I'm baby stepping. I'm doing the work. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I need, I need. <laughs> anyway, maybe somebody will, will know what I'm talking about. There are some subconscious fears affecting our ability <laughs> to attract love and abundance. The universe is helping us make them con conscious so we can easily attract what we want, including each other. So again, for those of you that are in contact with your person, low contact, you're both scared. You're both scared to open up. You're both scared to get hurt again. You're both scared to trigger each other. You're both scared to... This means a lot to both of you. And again, there's that message of opening Queen of Cups energy. Nine, surrender brings us together faster than resistance. So yeah, there. so much of this is about surrendering. And again, when you're waiting for contact or when you're in low contact and confused, Continue to work on your shadows and continue to see your own cycles. And when you get really in tune with it, you can actually see your cycles happening right before your eyes. You can see yourself having a reaction. Actually, a really good word of advice for you guys is to not respond to anything without taking a 10 minute break. <laughs> and that comes from a Taurus. <laughs> Who's like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> so it's really when you start looking at your own cycles, you can actually start seeing them as they happen and you can stop them. It's an amazing thing. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to get some tarot. This is <clears throat> probably already long enough, but let's get some tarot. Um, yeah, we'll use these ones. So spirit, let's have a look at this connection. First of all, let's put these away because I always make a mess. All right, so spirit, I want to tap into this twin flame collective. We're going to look at the energy. What's blocking? What's coming? What messages do you have for my twinnies? My beautiful twinnies. My beautiful twinnies. Alrighty. Okay. Right away, we have two coming in. We have Eight of Cups and Temperance. So this is the current energy. So holding back, somebody walked away because there's there needed to be balance here. I was, do you know what's really weird, you guys? I did a reading the other day and I had, Sometimes when I do readings, I don't have memories of them because I'm channeling. And the other day I was drawn to watch one of my own readings. It was really strange. And I noticed that I could hold the cards up a bit higher so you could see them. <laughs> 
But anyway, this is the current energy. So we have someone, I feel like someone who walked away or, you know, this is an energy of walking away. This is Eight of Cups energy. And now we have Temperance. So coming into balance, there's something, there's something coming into balance here. And I feel like we have the sun and the moon here and this frog going through transformation. Something's changing here. But with that Eight of Cups energy, you could feel... Again, you're not sure what's what's going on. The Eight of Cups actually has... Um, it has many meanings, depending on the card. And I'm actually getting for this one someone who is stood in their power with that tiger. Like, look at that tiger standing in their power, standing. Their foot is in that cup. All of those cups are standing. And it's like that, that tiger is believing in divine timing. That tiger is believing that this will happen and that this will come in. We see this boat here. And temperance, I just feel this transformative energy because frogs go through certain stages and transform in ways that is unrecognizable. Something that counterpart mentioned today, which I wanted to mention, is that when you come back together after a long separation, you're actually both very different because think about how much you've changed. Think about all the things you've worked on. This person has been working too and it's almost like you guys have to get to know each other again. But we do see this here and I feel like guided by the divine feminine to change, to transform. That's what I'm feeling. Take it as it resonates, depending on gender. I, I do have masculines that watch me and book readings with me. So there you go. Queen of Swords on the bottom. See, standing in your authentic truth, you chose yourself and you stood in your authentic truth, which is what I was getting with that. It's funny. Okay. goodness me so this is the divine masculine's energy so again some of you are already talking to this person we have sagittarius cancer scorpio pisces we have air and earth taurus virgo capricorn gemini libra aquarius so this is somebody that wants to work on this this is these cards are meant to represent the Divine Masculine. So I already feel, again, some of you already know this is happening. Some of you are already in contact. And look at this beautiful sword. Look at this clarity. And look at this figure just standing so strong. Like, yeah, I know. I know we have history. I know. I know I hurt you in the past. I know you hurt me in the past. And there's also this energy of being with these cards. These are beautiful cards. I'm also getting the energy of they're really facing their fears. Because this figure does not look scared about these three wolves. And it makes me feel like this person knows like you've hurt them. They've hurt you. But they want to work together. This is a card of collaboration. This is a card of working together. And again, in the Light Seers, it's my absolute favorite deck and it's the one I learned on. And the feminine, in my opinion, is sitting on the floor and she has a red string. And it's like, it, it looks like a traffic light. And she's grounded with the red string. Stop. And then we have the masculine person or the, the masculine energy on the top. 
with a green thread. Green like go. Anyway, the masculine really looks up to the feminine in these circumstances. And they look to them to lead, unfortunately. And again, that's what that counterpart reader was talking about, that we almost have to... It's a delicate juggle because at one point we need to be the queen of swords and we need to stand in our authentic truth. But then we also need to be that queen of cups. We need to open our heart to them so they know they can be vulnerable with us. It's almost like watching each other, like who's going to make the move? Who's going to do it? Who's going to make the first move? Who's going who's gonna to say they, I, I love you first? Who's going to say I missed you first? Who's going to ask to come to go see each other if you're at a distance anyway six of swords on the bottom so moving forward okay let's keep going all right so this is the feminine energy so we have two of swords and we have queen of wands so I feel like, again, you could have been through a glow up and you're standing in your power. You're standing in your queen of wands energy. And you've got this, look at this. You've got this, you've got this transformed masculine <laughs> looking at you. And you're like, I don't know. Can I trust him? Can I trust that? Don't gender Anyway, please take the energy as it resonates. I'm never, I'm never, I'll be very frank with you guys. I have a transgender child and a child that's non-binary. So again, I accept everyone here. So if you're going to be hateful in my comments, I'm going to delete it. <laughs> But we have temperance and two of, sorry, we don't have temperance. We have you standing in your power here. Like this, this person could just be drawn to you right now. Because again, this is somebody that's been through a glow up. This is somebody that, you know, you've been through, when you're elevated, you're, you glow and you attract. And this person is very attracted to you. I did say that. But you're looking at this like it's this indecision, like you're not sure what's going on here. Again, for some of you, I really do feel like you're in low contact or about to be. And this Queen of Wands just is like, I'm not sure if I can trust that. I'm not sure if I can trust that transformation. Did you really transform? But this is also about making a decision. And this figure, actually, let's back it up now that I'm actually looking at these very well. You're in your Queen of Wands energy. Take it as it resonates. You're feeling powerful. You're feeling confident. Again, I do feel like you're worrying about this. But if you look at this Two of Swords, this Two of Swords has already decided. Usually with the Two of Swords, we see somebody who can't see and this frog has picked the sword it's leaning towards the moon side which is interesting we have fireflies so it's this frog is illuminated this frog knows what it's doing and it's looking at this frog like yeah i pick you i pick you <laughs> we have eight of pentacles on the bottom an ace of pentacles and the fool So again, I feel you're looking at this like, how can we make this work? You want this new beginning. You want this new beginning with this person. You know it's going to be hard work. This is also about seeing your rewards, seeing your investment. And we have the fool. All right, let's keep going. Ah, can I see what's blocking this union? What's blocking this union? Fear! I can't make this up. <gasps> Guys, I can't make this up. <laughs> I feel bad for the people who 
don't like how excited I get. <laughs> Guys, this is what's blocking it. Well, I don't even have to take this card. It was on the bottom, but I did want to bring it out because it is symbolic of union. It's symbolic of healing childhood wounds. I said it yesterday in a reading. Look at all those ancestor elephants that are now at peace because the two of you are working together to work through these triggers, find your way back to each other, take down the wall, and you're freeing all of this ancestral trauma. But anyway, this was the actual card that came up. <laughs> Blocking union, overthinking it in your head. You're both in your heads. If you're in your head about this, they're in their head about this. Just, again, keep reminding yourself that every time you're worried, be like, take comfort in knowing they're worried too. And this is what's, this is what's blocking this from really becoming a union here. Again, I'm really feeling the people who are already in low contact or about to be. I'm not trying to deter the ones who aren't. Don't worry. How can we clear this blockage? How can this blockage be cleared, spirit? How to clear this blockage? We have the Nine of Cups. So, again, for those of you who are in low contact, Look at that peacock. Look at that. That is beautiful. And look at, I love, I love reading cards intuitively because the peacock is so beautiful. It's a symbol of divinity. And this is your advice for how to unblock this. And I really feel this message of trust in this trust your intuition i can't help but like look at all those they look like eyes anyway how to unblock it is again trust your intuition trust your third eye trust that this look at these two cups way up on top here on the other side of that lotus flower you guys there's a message here, this Nine of Cups energy as, as, as advice, how to get out of this energy is to express yourself, to show emotion, to, again, open up your heart, be a little bit vulnerable. I feel like if you're a little bit vulnerable, they will be too. This is for those of you who have been through a painful separation. This is not for those of you who have to set boundaries because this person is being Knight of Swords or Knight of Wands or Seven of Swords or the Devil. <laughs> anyway, there is a message there of sharing your emotion with each other, sharing your transformations with each other because you both have transformed. I hope I'm not holding that too close. You've both transformed with that with that lotus there and you need to get to know each other again the nine of cups go for a drink i don't drink but <laughs> all right what's coming next in this connection please spirit let's see what's coming what else what else spirit That's too many. All right. Look at that. We have the Queen of Cups on the bottom. So again, that's a message for those of you who need to embody Queen of Cups. And we're not talking overgiving. We're not talking chasing. We're talking about being vulnerable. Oh, look at this, you guys, for what's coming next. You guys are going to put down all these burdens. Look at these cards. We have the Hierophant and the Fool. 
Again, you guys are going to put down this feeling of burden, energy, this feeling of feeling guarded with each other and having walls up. And you're really going to connect here with this Hierophant energy. This talks about higher level commitment. This is Taurus energy. We have fire. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. I feel like you guys are, again, you're going to put down these burdens and you're really going to start exploring the spiritual connection and this new beginning and getting to know each other again. Again, you've both elevated here. You've both elevated spiritually. Queen of Cups on the bottom. I also saw the lovers when I was shuffling. Let's get one more. Ten of Cups. All right. This is what waits, awaits you. Emotional fulfillment. So if you're feeling guard, feeling guard, feeling called to be vulnerable, if you're feeling like you want more in this low contact, there's a message of opening your heart. Queen of Cups energy. Ten of Cups. Beautiful. Spirit, let's look at... Let's look at what advice you have for this connection using these shadow cards. Don't take offense. We all have shadows. spirit can we look at the divine masculine please divine masculine energy of the divine masculine we have the rabbit let's find my book i'm sorry it's so loud i'm trying to be so quiet because again i felt called to watch a reading and i realized how loud i am all right rabbit Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Seventy. Seven. Chariot. Do, 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 do. Da -dum. Rabbit. This is masculine energy. See, for a lot of you, this is about to happen. You're about to hear from this person. And for a lot of you, low contact. You're already contact you're already kind of talking. Here and there, maybe, maybe more. Rabbit, fast-paced change, decision-making, the need to act. Rabbits are notorious for being skittish. Yes, that is the perfect, isn't that the perfect word for the counterpart that comes in before they're ready? It's like a skittish energy and you don't want to spook them, right? <laughs> you, you want to move slow. You don't want to spook it and have it run away into the forest. They are hypervigilant and ready to act at the slightest hint of danger. The arrival of this card means you must embody the quick acting nature of the rabbit now as things are about to start changing at a fast pace. This is masculine. To pull this card hails the arrival of an opportunity, to be sure, but it's a fleeting one. It is imperative both to recognize this and act in alignment with yourself. If you hesitate for too long, the moment will pass you by. But if you act too quickly, you may find yourself in over your head. That's the exact delicate balance. If they come in too quick, it's too much. And it scares them. If they come in too slow, anyway. Where are we? While this is a delicate balance to strike, it is one that can be mastered. If you are someone who struggles with indecision and overanalyzing, the pressure of the moment may cause you to freeze. It may be helpful to step out of the logical and instead in step into your gut instinct. Your higher self. Follow your intuition. Yes. 
Be ready to take action one way or another, but don't act out of fear. And this is divine masculine energy, you guys, because that's what I asked. So this person, again, we talked about the delicate balance. They just, they're taking it. They don't, they don't want to spook you either. It's a delicate dance. Do I tell them how I'm feeling or do I hold back? Do I give them space or do I talk to them more? Do I tell them I love them or do I pretend that I don't? <laughs> Spirit, can we get a card for the feminine, please? The feminines, the divine feminine. Uh, I'm going to read, I'm just going to, too many came out. I didn't, I didn't put that away for any other reason than too many came out and I looked at them all and I didn't know which one to take. So Spirit said, if it needs to come out again, it will. Divine Feminine. We have Interesting. All right, let's have a look. Snail, 62 Strength. Because it reduces to eight strength. Okay, so I felt called to do the snail. Two came out, but I only wanted to do one. We have the snail. So look at this, you guys. It's interesting because this is the divine masculine and this is the divine feminine. And it's interesting how the divine feminine or the divine masculine is in like this chasing energy isn't that interesting so guys listen to this this is why i didn't feel called to take those other cards because this is the one that needed to come out snail slow but steady progress the right path the adorable snail chugs along at a glacial pace not known for making fast movements they can move so slowly it often appears that they're scarcely moving at all however just like the turtle the snail always seems to get where it's going. To pull the steadfast snail is a signal that you're in alignment with the universe, walking the best path for you, even if it feels like you're standing still or moving at a snail's pace or the walls aren't coming down. Those are my words, not the books. <laughs> Life has a funny way of testing us, either by having everything happen everywhere all at once or not at all. Unfortunately, you may find yourself in the not at all portion of the test. As frustrating or disheartening as this may be, remember that we don't always see the payoff for our efforts immediately, nor can we see the things happening behind the scenes all the time. This card is a sign that you're doing all of the right things and this period calls for more of the same. Trust the process and let things unfold as they are ready to and not a moment sooner. Further reflection. In astrology, Saturn is a heavy planet that teaches us about hard work, responsibility, and limitations. These are lessons that require a certain maturity and experience before we can fully appreciate their value. The energy of the snail card is very Saturn, Saturnian? Okay. In this sense. <laughs> Though we may feel like nothing is happening, the slow season of time nevertheless allows us to cultivate a bigger, sweeter reward reward in the end. I love that. See? Do you see? Slow is good. Slow is good. All right, let's do initials. <clears throat> let's do initials and terms. I like how that matched what I was saying. That's very interesting. Queen of Cups energy. Be vulnerable with the person. All right. Where's my tray? There it is. Again, I need to get a proper tray. We're going to do initials for extra confirmation. Come out. All right, we have Y, M, P, X, R, O, 
A, X, X. Give them the X. No, don't. F, E, U, D, N, U, B, C, B, L, F, P, S. P, S, I love you. Z. Did you guys like that movie? Z, R, J. And charms. Let's do the charms. Spirit, let's have some charms for this collection. We'll give them a stir. Couple more. There we go. All right, so we have the hot air balloon, movement forward, the chariot. We have a key, Aries energy, a baby foot for some of you. Babies, kitty cat. We have the two swans, so twin flames, union, skull and crossbones, so possibly toxic behavior. Look, we have a plane. You could be traveling or you could be at a distance from this person. Mickey Mouse could be relevant. We have, ooh, see, both of us have toxic energy that we need to heal through. Violin, butterfly transformation, that bunny, that bunny comes out all the time. We have a little girl, we have an angel, a guitar, music, very important. Divine, oh look, we have another music note. Music is very important. We have Wheel of Fortune. We have the Twin Flame Hearts, you guys. Those have been coming out a lot. Building a foundation, slowly. We have the mermaid, whatever this thing is. I always think it looks like a J. We have a big dolphin, look at this dolphin. That's a huge dolphin. We have grapes, take it as it resonates. Yoga. We have, oh, a boat, so a trip. Receiving news, transformation, four leaf clover. Peace sign. Elephant, working on it. <laughs> uh, fishy, feather, scissors, star, and that weird J thing. There you go, guys. So I'm going to leave it here today, and I will be back with more. I hope you all have a beautiful weekend. I'm sure I'll do a pick a card this weekend though. So yeah, thank you again for joining me for another reading. And as always, I'm sending you and your person so much love. And if you do want to book a personal, that reading is in the description box below. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Sending you love. Bye.